Breaking news out of the Super Committee deficit talks tonight. Just five days to go to reach a deal. Democrats rejecting another plan. Take a listen to Massachusetts Democrat John Kerry this afternoon. We were sent here to do 1.2 trillion, or 1.5 trillion, or 4 trillion. So the idea on Friday of uh, settling for half of what the American people need and what we were sent here to do is unacceptable to me. All right, we are joined tonight by members of both houses of Congress from the House, New Jersey Democrat Robert Andrews, and from the Senate Hi, side, Louisiana Republican David Vitter. Hello, Rob. Hello, Senator Vitter. Thank you. Hey, Larry. Very much. Good to be with you, Mr. Vitter. Let me just begin with you. Sure. I guess the Democrats rejected this half a loaf idea, do about 600 billion in spending cuts, and then let the rest go to the automatic trigger. What's your take on that? Would you personally be favor of it, and does it have a chance? Well, look, I'd rather go big, but the Democrats are pretty much rejecting everything in sight, unfortunately. Uh, your lead-in talked about taxes. Look, Republicans have gone the extra mile on taxes. They've actually uh, offered real tax increases. I don't particularly like that, but that's part of their proposal. So they've crossed the line on taxes. They're really not being met. Rob Andrews, is this really base bottom about taxes and specifically the Bush tax rates and the Democratic's opposition to real tax reform? The more I read, and we had a quote from Senator Patty Murray, the more it occurs to me that's the problem. I agree with the first half of your, your question. Here's what it's about. The president and the Democrats have pretty much said all along we would do $3 of cuts for every $1 taxes. The taxes that have been put on the table by the Republicans are ephemeral, Larry. As I understand the proposal, it's got $800 billion in rate cuts and $300 billion in loophole closers. That's a $500 billion revenue loss. It's, 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 you know, it's a mirage. So if we could get a dollar of taxes for every dollar of spending cuts, I think we'd have a deal. I think it should be $4 trillion, not smaller. All right. Well, I agree with you about $4 trillion, But, Rob, let me just come back to this point. We had Senator Pat Toomey on, I guess it was last evening, and his plan yeah. has been scored as a $250 billion revenue increase. Yeah, he yeah has, Larry, I, want, I he, wanted to make the same he, point. He has, massive, he has massive cutbacks for upper what income he, what he also, deductions. What he, also, what he also has is a cut in the top rate, as I understand it, to 28%. And if you do it, if you take it down to 28 percent, and you only do the 350 in loophole closures, you get a minus 500 at the end of no, the year. No, Larry, that, that, that math is completely wrong because the wrong, 300 David? billion dollars in net tax increases counts all of the rate reductions. That is built in, and that's what not the Republicans say. That's what CBO has said. I mean, there's a trillion dollars well, in that, these. There's a trillion dollars in these deductions, and most of them are in the upper income, and most of that well, gets not, wiped you know, out all in that, return for lower this. tax rates. If you get that much in deductions, as I understand it, then the home mortgage inter interest deduction has to go by the, by the wayside to the middle class. Is that right, David? Does that include I don't, that? I, I don't know if they're talking about the home mortgage deduction or not, perhaps I just for the are. upper income, but I absolutely know that the net figure, net revenue increase, yep. is about $300 billion. How, that, how counts, about the, how about the, that counts how about the, the rate reductions. How about the charitable deduction for middle class givers for their church or their synagogue? Does that go? I don't, I don't know what is involved. I think it does. But I know the net no, figure I don't think so. is a net revenue increase. I, I know. Think so. Most of these exemption cutting, uh, deduction cutting, come for the top brackets, but I, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I, I don't well, understand, Larry, Rob. We do know. We Rob, do know so you, what, can get, you can get between 250 and 300 in loophole closures for the top brackets. To get six or seven hundred billion, you got to hit the middle class with the home mortgage deduction, the charitable. I don't think we want to do that. Well, I don't know how the tax rates are priced at, but I want to ask you this. As a matter of common sense, Rob, why in the world would you want any tax increases, particularly tax rates that affect economic incentives and job incentives? This is the part I don't understand. Yeah. To me, the Democratic position is fairness, but my position is growth. I just mm -hmm. don't see how you reconcile that. Well, first of all, none of these higher rates would go into effect, I believe, for at least a year or 18 months. But second, Larry, you know, we did what you wanted to do in 2001 and 2003. And of course, in 1993, we raised the rates on the upper group. Now, what happened? Between 93 and 2000, the economy added 23 million new jobs. From 01 to 08, it lost 
eight million new jobs. How come the lower taxes didn't work? Larry, if Rob thinks raising rates in the middle of a recession is a recipe for job creation, he's alone in that argument. I don't know any economist, left, right, or middle, who thinks that. That's just a bad idea. But the fact well, is, the Republican proposal on the table does offer revenue, but it does it in a pro-growth way in the context of tax reform. And by the way, that will produce growth. The growth will produce revenue. And that's not scored. So there's more revenue that would actually be created that's not even part of the score. I mean, it's basically Simpson Bowles, Rob. That's Correct. really where this tax reform comes from. And I thought yep. there was a consensus in Washington. I thought you might have been part of that consensus yeah, this, to this, favor this that kind of tax reform. This is not Simpson Bowles. The proposal on the table is not Simpson Bowles. And here's the other point about what happened in the last decade. Uh, in 1993, Dick Armey, said that the Clinton increase on the top rates would cause the worst recession in American history. It didn't. 23 million new jobs were created. How do you guys explain that? But don't forget, investment tax rates were subsequently lowered. I mean, Clinton yes, signed were. one of the biggest capital gains tax cuts in history. And, and don't and forget, subsequently, and you had and a contract you had a high, of the, you the the historic high tech that's, boom. That's historic. The part. This is in the context and of the worst what, recession since and you the Great didn't get Depression. That, you I, didn't get that I, I growth in differ. 93 and 94 I, I and beg, 95. I beg to differ. The high tech boom came in 97, 98, 99. Right. The decision came in 1993. And the capital now, gains tax it, cut was in 96. In 97, it was Larry. Early 97, it, but, and it was but, but everybody growth, knew it was coming in late 96. I, 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 growth, I think you're, I, I think in, you're talking 20, about two completely fellas, different landscapes in terms of the we 90s are. versus we today. We are. We're talking about a landscape that produced 23 million new jobs with our plan and minus eight with yours. That's the difference. Well, Larry, let me go back to one of your comments. This is broad brush Simpson Bowles. This is broad brush uh, the, the gang proposal in the Senate, and yet the Democrats are rejecting it. This is the model that can work in terms of tax reform. That's the key. All right. We have a difference Larry, of opinion. I appreciate it. it I got to log if out. It really, if Thanks, it really Larry. were that, I think we could support it, but it isn't. Thank All you, Larry. Right. Rob Andrews, as always, we appreciate your coming on. Senator David Vitter, we appreciate